Hey guys, welcome back to Hellmouth Hotline. I actually had to think about the name of the show there for a second. I'm juggling that many balls as far as podcasts and YouTube channels and stuff goes at the minute. But yes, Hellmouth Hotline, I'm your host, Rodney Stewart. We're getting into the hammer box set once more with Quatermass and the Pit. This movie is an absolute gem and a treat. And one that... Uh, pretty much, well, I wouldn't say scarred me for life when I was a child, but we'll get into that in more detail in the review. Uh, awesome little movie. I hope you enjoy this breakdown of it. This is an excellent movie, released in 1967 by Hammer, and it's as a sequel to. The Quatermass Experiment and Quatermass 2. Uh, I haven't seen them yet. And the box set does not contain those two movies. Uh, the further I go in the Hammer box set, this version of the Hammer collection, there does seem to be a few movies that are not included in this box set. So at some point, I'll track them down and we'll get them onto the playlist for this channel. But the Quatermass, Quatermass in the Pit, Sorry, this movie is absolutely fantastic and you know to modern audiences if you've never seen this before this will be a slow burn for you like most of the Hammer movies are. Uh, again these movies as I've said before in the past give them a little bit of time to get into it and you're not going to be disappointed especially in this one. I have seen bits and pieces of this throughout my life uh, very rarely have I sat down and seen the entire movie and it was a absolute genuine thrill to watch it again and just get my head on it properly once and for all. I think one of the earliest memories I have of seeing Queer Mass and the Pit was on late night TV back in the early 80s whenever I was a kid um, yes kids showing my age right here um, I think it must have been in around 84 86 I was channel hopping one night when I should have been sleeping at that stage I was back in primary school I was only about maybe seven or eight years old at the time and you know late night kid that age should be sleeping but no Numb Nuts here was up channel hopping uh, when his parents didn't know about it. So like, you know, I bounced across probably the last 10 to 15 minutes of Quatermass and the Pit at that age and it absolutely terrified the life out of me. Now, the closing of this movie is absolutely fantastic. The, the set pieces at the end of the movie with, you know, the streets getting tore apart in London and you know the giant alien like shape up in the background in the sky which compared to today's technology and film making is quite looks a little bit dated but back then terrified the absolute crap out of me and mixing that and along with the, the panic and the destruction that's going on below is ah oh, that's beautiful absolutely well done and that's a movie I, d I don't want to really give away too many details with this movie because it is one of these ones in the hammer box set that you really do need to sit there and watch because it is actually a classic I'll just give you a little bit of what it says on Wikipedia for uh, Quatermass in the Pit it just goes through here released in 67 British uh, science fiction horror film from Hammer Film Productions, a sequel, as I said earlier on, to The Quatermass Experiment and The Quatermass 2. Uh, like its predecessors, it's based on a BBC television serial, Quatermass and the Pit, written by Nigel Neal, uh, directed by Roy Ward Baker, and stars Andrew Keir in the title role as Bernard Quatermass. Um, the storyline. 
which is largely faithful to the original television production, centers on the discovery of a mysterious object buried at the site of a London extension in the London Underground. Also uncovered nearby are remains of early human ancestors more than 5 million years old. Realising that the object that is found with them is in fact an ancient Martian spacecraft. Uh, again, the set pieces in there are absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Um, Quatermass deduces that the aliens have influenced human evolution and the development of human intelligence. The spacecraft has an intelligence of its own and once uncovered begins to exert a malign influence resurrecting Martian memories and instincts very deep within the human psyche. Uh, that's it, this movie, it's, there is no, it's aliens, but there is no real physical alien presence. Uh, they, they, they find this spaceship and they take the, the bodies of dead aliens out that look like uh, insects and it's like the memories that are carried within their spaceship and the aliens themselves and there's a part in the movie where it actually you know what it, it makes contact uh, with a few people in this movie and they read the brain patterns of a girl that's connected to the spaceship and they project the memory she's picking up from it and put it onto the t television screen and it shows like the, the destruction of the home planet where this spaceship came from and it's just by the end of the movie it's just this thing kicks off and it just starts throwing out these memories and whatnot into the, the population uh, that's oh and just the the telekinetic explosion from that there just starts destroying everything around it and it's just oh gosh even saying all that there is more than enough to destroy this film for you it's one of these ones genuinely without a doubt sit down and watch it you're going to absolutely love this one if you're into the hammer movies in any way shape or form this is up at the top of them for me so far there's still quite a few movies in this film and this box set that i haven't got a chance to watch yet but ah, oh, again, this this one definitely does earn the title of a classic movie, and you're not going to be disappointed to sit down and watch this one. Trust me, go and check it out. This has been a production of Coins Edge Media. Check out my social media links in the show notes. Thank you so much for listening.